If you've ever found yourself struggling to choose colors that work well together, you are in the right place. Today, we are going to talk about the easiest way to choose amazing color combinations every time without any knowledge of color theory or science or art or any of that professional level artist stuff. So stick around and let's get creative. Hi, I'm Sarah Renee Clark, and it's my goal to help you unlock your inner artist and get more creative in your everyday life. I don't know about you, but when I look at my set of pencils, I find that I always go back to the same few colors every time I color in. I have subconsciously created a safety net in the few colors that I know look good together and I rarely experiment with new color combinations unless I really challenge myself to try something new. And we've all been there. Choosing good color combinations doesn't come naturally to most of us. Just because you've learned basic color theory in school doesn't mean you automatically know what colors work well together and why certain colors seem to clash. I've previously created a video teaching the basics of color theory, so if you're ready to learn more about that, you can. But if you're looking for an easier option and just want to color without learning all that color science stuff, then this video is for you. Before we go any further, please take a moment to press the subscribe button below and turn on that little notification bell so you'll get an alert every time I create a new video like this. So here's the secret that many colorists use to choose their colors. And if you've already been following me for a while, then you probably already know what I'm about to say, and that's to use a color palette. Using a color palette can help you to create a certain look or mood, whether it's something fun and vibrant or dark and emotional. It can serve as a great source of inspiration to help you break through creative block and give you a starting point when you're stuck for ideas or not sure where to begin. Browsing color palettes in something like the color catalog can become a really fun part of your process and exploring new color combinations can be exciting and rewarding. It can help you think of new and unique ways to look at something like using different colors that you wouldn't usually consider using like all of these different examples of skies and storms that include a huge range of unexpected colors. In the same way, it can give you so much more variety. There are so many different colors that make up similar scenes and yet produce such different moods and results. Just look at all the variety for a Christmas theme. And above all else, it can give you confidence in choosing your colors because you can see how they come together before you begin. And over time, you'll naturally develop an eye for what colors look good together and build your own skills in choosing colors. So where can you find these color palettes? I'm using the color catalog in this video, which you can get from my website. I've created all of these color palettes myself using photos from different photographers around the world. But you can also find my color palettes and other color palettes on Pinterest, Instagram, and around the internet. I'll include some links in my blog post so you can find that in the description below. Now, let me walk you through exactly how you can use a color palette in your coloring books. You can also use color palettes in other art, design, crafts, cooking, interior design, makeup, and so much more. Coloring books are just one of so many uses for these. In fact, if you're watching this video and you're using a color palette for something else that I haven't mentioned, let me know in the comments because I'd love to see just how much variety we have in our creative community here. So first, here are some examples where I've recently used color palettes. I used a color palette in my recent video where I showed you how to create thousands of colors from just 12 pencils. I mixed my pencils to try and match the colors to my palette as closely as possible. I used another palette in the next video to color a whole page with my 12 Crayola pencils, using the sky from the palette as inspiration for the sky in my coloring page. I've also used palettes in the past for some other coloring pages because I find it's a really good way to stretch myself and stop going back to the same few colors. Honestly, if I don't use a color palette, I always revert back to a combination of teals, blues, and purples because these are my go-to colors if I'm doing it without a color palette, even after all my experience with colors. When it comes to actually using a palette, there's no right or wrong approach. You can use it as general inspiration or use it as strictly or loosely as you want. If you're using the color catalog, it comes as a digital version that you can navigate and easily find whatever palette you are looking for by keyword, color, or collection. And from there, you can either just match the colors by eye 
or you can print out the page you want to work from and actually swatch your pencils out on the page for a more accurate match. Not all printers will print the colors the same, so you will find that your printer colors are not as bright as the colors on the screen, but this doesn't matter as much as you'd think. In the same way, not every set of pencils or markers is going to have a perfect match for every color in your palette, and that's okay. You can either try to mix your colors to get a closer match, or just pick something that's close and has the same general hues as the color in the palette. So I'm going to run through an example with you of exactly how I go through the process of swatching my pencils with the color palette. So I have this coloring page from my coloring book, Confessions of a Coloring Addict, because it felt appropriate for what we are doing. So I found this page called The Only Thing Better Than a Good Friend is a Good Friend with New Pencils. And because it's about new pencils, I wanted to test out this new pencil set that was actually given to me by Black Widow Pencils. They are the Monarch Pencils, Monarch Pencil, sorry, wax colored pencil set. And the reason that these are gorgeous is because they have an amazing pastel range, which I have not seen in many other pencil sets. So because I want to really do these pencils justice on this page, even though it's a very simple page, I thought let's actually find um, a good pastel color palette to help us color this page. And we are going to browse by keywords. So one of the keywords that I do have here in my color catalog is actually pastel. This is the color catalog volume two. So the color catalog volume one does not have a pastel range, but volume two does. And in the pastel range here, we have some options. Now I have actually already found one that I liked and printed it. So I have that here and that is number 367. So you can see that here. So I've got this here, 367, and I've already printed that. Here's one I prepared earlier. So here we go. <laughs> and so I'm actually going to put the digital one aside now because, well, first I'll show you there's two ways you can do this. So if you don't have a printer or you wanna get the really bright colors from the screen, you can simply grab a scrap piece of paper and grab your color, color catalog and you basically just eyeball it. <laughs> grab your pencils, have a look at your pencils and most pencils try to give you some kind of color reference here but you can't just rely on the actual color barrel of the barrel to match to your page because if you've used color pencils before in most cases these barrels are not going to be a perfect match for the actual pigment of the pencil. It's a very important tip to remember. So we want to actually draw on a page before working on your final page to make sure the colors are accurate. So we're gonna try first to find something suitable for this purple. Now again, not every brand of colors, especially like this is a very special set from Black Widow that is a unique range of colors. It's not the standard set of primary colors. So I'm probably not gonna find exact matches for everything unless I've bought some of Black Widow's other pencil sets. So I might have to get a little bit creative if I'm wanting to copy this exact color palette. You can do that by mixing colors or you can do that by pulling colors from other sets. It's really up to you. Or if you get stuck and you really can't find the matching color, it's actually okay. You can adjust the colors because like I said, you don't have to follow this strictly. You can follow it as a guide, as a starting point to just try and create this overall look. So we're gonna aim for a purple and there are a few purples here. So let's just draw these on our scrap piece of paper to see what we've got to work with. So first we have this nice purple here. It's actually quite bright and quite beautiful. And I do think that this purple, as much as it's not quite this darker purple, actually looks a lot like some of the colors in here. So this could be a good option, even though it's not quite this option here. We have this one here. Now this is quite different. So I'm actually gonna put that one away. So it's a good thing we didn't draw that straight on our coloring page. It's a good thing we did our practice sheet first. And let's have a look at some of our other similar colors around this purple. That's definitely not a purple, that's a blue. This one looks like a darker purple. Okay, so that might be a color that we could maybe work with. We've got another really dark one here. This is a navy blue, so I don't think it's a purple at all. Okay, it's a blue. What else have we got? We might be able to mix a gray with our purple if we're wanting to get it a bit more. So let's try this. Let's try doing a light layer of purple and then a light layer of gray. Okay, so that might get us a bit closer to the gray. So that's one way we can do it. Now, if you wanna make this process a little bit easier, rather than trying to match to the screen, 
this is why we have the printable version. So let's now put our digital one aside and let's do the same thing on the printable page. Now, I've had some people that have said to me, where can I get the whole book printed? My advice is don't actually print the whole color catalog. I'll, I'll show you in a second a new resource that I have if you really do want to be able to flip through the whole thing. But if you're wanting to do it the way that I like to do it, it's better to just find it in the book. That way you can use the buttons, you can navigate and then print the page that you're wanting to use. So let's try this. And now we can actually see the purple right up against the purple that's actually from the color catalog. Now, some printers are not going to work exactly the same, but that's okay because the printer is going to print all the colors slightly too blue or slightly too red or slightly too dull. And so they're actually all going to end up having the same change applied to them and therefore they'll all still work together. And really what this is about is finding colors that work well together. So even if your printer prints completely different to your screen, the colors that you print are still going to work together. And that's really what we're trying to achieve. So please don't worry if you don't have an amazing quality printer, it's still going to work for you. So this is not a perfect match for the purple, but I actually think it does work with our color palette. So we're going to use a combination of these two colors mixed together to try and work with our purple there. So let's just pop them there. Now let's try and find this kind of salmon color here. So we do have some light. This one here is called Bliss and we've got a fudge color. Oh, I like some of these color names. We've got fudge, we've got ice cream, we've got, oh, what else is here? Mushroom, oh, I'm allergic to mushrooms, kind of that. Candy, ice cream, candy, mango, peach, oh. I think I'm gonna have to have something nice to eat after this. Okay. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? Rather than drawing it on here, I'm actually gonna use my scrap piece of paper again just to see what these colors are generally like. Okay, so I've got a pink here and I've got a red. What else have we got? Because these are quite pastel, I might not be able to find quite dark enough color for this particular one in this set, and that's okay. So what I might do is we might adjust our palette because we can do that. And so out of our bliss and our fudge, I think I'm gonna aim more towards the fudge. Who can say no to fudge? So the fudge, the reason I'm going for the fudge is because if we think about our color wheel. Now, if you wanna know more about the color wheel, I know we're getting into color science, I promised you no color science. But the thing about the color wheel is it is good to learn if you're up for it. There's another video for that. But the color wheel does tell us that this color, as much as it's different to our color here, the only real difference between these colors is that one of them is a lot more saturated and it's got a lot more of, I guess, a deeper color to it. It's actually the same color group, if I simplify that for you. So they're both kind of got that reddy pink color, even though one of them's a lot stronger of a red pink color. Whereas this color, the Bliss, has a lot more pink than red. That's the reason why I've chosen that color. Even though it's not the same color, it's close. So we are going to stick with that in this case, even though it's not perfect match. That's okay. So we kind of have two colors there, and then we're gonna take our orange. So you might be wondering why I'm kind of breaking the rules with my own color palettes here. And that's because, and this is why I've chosen this set of pencils as well, because I do have other sets of pencils that have a bit more of the traditional colors. And not only did I really wanna try out this set, because I actually think this is a really exciting set of colors that I've never tried before. But I wanna show you that you actually can break the rules a bit and you actually can use different colors to what the palette has, as long as you follow the general guidelines of the palette, the general concept of the palette. So again, I don't have a dark enough orange because these are really beautiful pastel colors. So we're gonna pick this orange that's kind of close. It's not quite dark enough, but because I'm following this general guide of the purple with the pink with the orange, you can see that these end colors are actually looking pretty good together. So let's just, just trust me on this and we'll see how we go towards the end. Actually, that one is a bit darker. So let's go for that one. Okay, now we don't even have a yellow. Ooh, okay. So let's go for, Ooh, don't drop your pencils. Let's aim towards a bit of a creamy color instead of the yellow. Let's go for that one. And, ooh, this is gonna challenge me now. 
So we have here, it's a bit of a creamy yellow green. So that's going to be hard to match. That is way off. We need something lighter. But these two light colors, what have we got here? Oh, that could be close. Okay. Maybe this one. Maybe even this one. All right, so I've got two contenders here, both of which are not quite right. I feel like if we stick with this one and we will just apply it very, very lightly. So we're just gonna apply this very lightly. And if we don't put too much pressure, you can see it's actually pretty close. And finally, we have a blue. I feel like we should be able to get this blue and I have named this color Seafoam. Let's see what Black Widow have named their version of this because they have some pretty cool names. Cat's Eye. That's kind of close. Denim. Mm. Or maybe Ocean. Oh, that's a bit too dark for me. So, Sky Denim or Cat's Eye. I do really like these colors. They are very, very unique. I actually don't own any of the other Black Widow sets. I would love to see how this set complements some of the other sets. So if you do own any of the other Black Widow sets, tell me in the comments what you think, because they are really nice pencils. I'm really impressed. All right, I'm gonna go with the denim. Okay. I have picked my colors and just so that we can see a final swatch, I'm actually going to swatch them out on the paper. So if we look at these pencils, first of all, side by side, let's put them out nicely. And for simplicity, I'm actually not going to mix the gray into the purple. We're just gonna go straight for the purple. So it's not a perfect match for our color palette. I usually try to match them pretty closely, but I just wanted to show you that you don't necessarily have to. Okay, so if we look closely at these colors, I of all people, would never have picked these colors together if I was picking pencils straight out of my tin. And yet I made this color palette and I think the color palette actually looks pretty good. <laughs> Not because I made it, by the way. So let's just see if we actually swatch them out, what we think of this final palette. So let's have a look. We've got our purple and yes, it is quite a bit brighter. we have got to trust it here. We have our, so, get the names right. We have our lavender. We have our fudge. Oh, the lavender might have been a bit, bit bold actually. I probably should have toned it down. <laughs> we have our Aztec gold. I'm actually going to even blend them together a little bit because we are looking at a sky here where they've kind of blended together. Oh, these blend nicely. Okay. We have our cream. Is that next? Yes. Then we have our poison. Oh, that's a bit of a contrast from the fudge. <laughs> poison fudge. What am I mixing poison with? I'm mixing it with cream. Oh dear. <laughs> All right, I do think that that purple's probably a bit intense for this. So, I guess that answers the next question. What do you do when you don't have an exact match? So you have a few options. The first option is you try and mix a color. So we do have that option of mixing the gray into the color. If you look at that and go, that's too much work. The other option is take the color out or find another color that works. So if you look at the color palette we've got, it actually looks pretty good at the end, but you could actually just take that purple out or you could try and find another similar color. So because in our original color palette, we didn't really end up using, so our um, ready color, we have a lot more of a pink here. So maybe we could find another color that's got a bit more red because we really lost that red in our color palette. So this color palette is not that true to the original one, but because we've used that as inspiration, it gave us a really good starting point for this palette. So I'm going to do a very rough draft colouring page 
using the color palette we've chosen and using these pencils. And you know what? As soon as I started coloring, I've realized that if we mix this light pinky color and this yellow together, we actually kind of get the salmon color that we were trying to find. And of course I should know this because mixing magenta and yellow actually makes red. That's very similar to these colors here. I should know my color theory, so I should know better. But that's exactly where if you grab my free color swatching mixing chart that I have on my website, you can take whatever pencils you do have and you can actually practice mixing them together so that if you do only have a small set, you can find out exactly what other colors you can make. If I had have done that before actually trying to swatch these colors out, I would have found all those other colors and I would have found that we actually could have made the perfect color for this palette by mixing those two colors together. But never mind, it's all worked out great. And even though our colors don't match this palette perfectly, I still think they are turning out really well on this coloring page. Now I'm not gonna color everything in, I'm actually gonna leave the pencils for now. So what my plan will be with these pencils in the future is just use the same color palette and just color the pencils as if they are all part of the palette or alternatively, you could actually just do them the set of the entire set of pencils. You don't have to stick to the color palette for everything on the entire page. Um, in this case, because the pencils are an object, you might wanna use the real object colors. So I could actually color the pencils black because I'm using black widows, even though black is not in my color palette. And the pencil casings and the pencil leads, I could color the colors of my pencil set. Same if you're coloring a face, you don't necessarily have to find a color palette with a skin tone. You could use your color palette for everything else, for the clothes, for the background, for all the accessories, but then color your hair and your skin a color that is normal for hair and skin. So again, use your color palette as a guide and go from there. Honestly, I could have gotten rid of the beige color altogether. I didn't really need it in this color palette with the way that I've used it but I did add it at the top just because I wanted to throw it in there. I did also find that the blue probably could have gone without, but I've put it in there because I did want to include it. And overall, I think this page has turned out pretty good, especially given that it was a pretty rushed job. Now, if this all seems like a lot of work, I have some good news because today I'm releasing a new add-on to the color catalog called the Color Catalog Companion. It is a new printable guide with every color palette from the color catalog where my team and I have pre-filled every pencil color for you for some of the most popular pencil brands so that you don't have to go to the effort of finding the best match. So this was the Prisma colors, but we will also have the Faber-Castell Polychromos, the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils, the Black, Will Black Widow colored pencils, Derwent Color Soft, Derwent Ink Tense, doing artists, and we'll also have some markers, including Copic, Ahuhu, Spectrum Noir, and the Tombow Jewel brush pen sets. We also have a blank set, so if your brand isn't included or you have a different medium you'd like to try, you can still match your colors and keep an easy record without having to print all 500 pages from both color catalogs. So how do you get it? You can get it from my website by clicking on the eye at the top of your screen now. I'll also include a link in the description below and in the blog post. You can buy the companion on its own, but it's heavily discounted if you buy it with the actual color catalog. Or if you've already bought the color catalog in the past, check your emails for a discount coupon from me. If you purchase it now, you'll get the Prismacolor and the Spectrum Noir companions right away and you'll be emailed the rest of the included brands by the end of February at the latest, along with any future brands I add for free. When I release the rest in February, the price will be going up, so it's worth getting in early now. And if you don't think you need help matching your pencils, then you might not need the companion at all, because the color catalog does come with a printable version already included. You can even use an app like GoodNotes to make notes in the digital PDF version if you'd like to record your favorite pencils and markers and still navigate using the buttons. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up below, press that subscribe button and turn on notifications. 
I love being able to help you be more creative and I have more videos like this planned for you. But don't go anywhere because I'd love to hear from you. Have you ever used a color palette before? And do you find them helpful? Please tell me in the comments and let me know what you've used a color palette for. And when you're done, please stick around for this next video I think you'll love.